Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here live tonight, 8 o'clock, a little after 8 o'clock on a Monday. That's June 24th. And uh, we have the market popping right here. I was going to do a little educational video, but I figured I'll add some other stuff with it. We just had, you know, last week or the last couple of weeks, we talked about a trading hours and what areas to pay attention to in the market to look for divergences and to look for trading opportunities. So we discussed some of those uh, those time frames and the the part of the uh, the lesson was really about the overnight trade and what watching Asia open up and some of the overnight markets. So you refer back to those videos to get to the to the calendars. But there's, oh, you know, when those markets come out, right around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, sometimes into 10, 11 o'clock, there's the, mark, the market, Asian markets um, tend to release news, just like our markets release news in the morning. So there, that's morning over there. The news is being released. And right now, I can tell you right now that live uh, news crossing the wire right here, giving us a little spike. Commerce Ministry Vice Premier Liu exchanged views with a Lightheiser via a phone call and they've agreed to keep communicating. <laughs> they've said, we'll talk soon. So the market got a little pop on that. Three points, not much. And, uh, you know, you can see it here on the screen, a little pop, and that's, that's a little news. But that's a good time to watch for breaking news. It's right around this 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock zone. Now, I don't think this is probably going to last. This is a short-term move. Came off of this level. We're probably going to end up coming back down to here because it doesn't look like any significant news. So it gets the algorithms get popped up here. They, they, they start to, uh, you know, they're reading news releases. If you get something out there that triggers a, a keyword, be it trade talks, da-da-da, whatever, you might see some buying coming in, tracks other buying, gets a fast little pop, only to be realized that, hey, this is not really, and it finally drips back. So these are usually short opportunities, they're usually short opportunities, unless there's some follow-through news. But this, does, this news does not look like anything that's worth looking for a rally. If it was something big, this thing would take off 10, 10, 20 points. If it's just a couple points, probably nine times out of 10, we end up pulling back some. So... That's what's happening right now. So some other topics. Again, it is up two points. I mean, S&P is up two points. Not much going on. Looking at Liongate Films here. It was down today. It's been getting hit pretty hard. This is actually the weekly chart. There's nothing interesting about the weekly chart. It did have a little bounce here. Rotated up, then ro rotated back down. We're back at an extreme level on that. We're underneath the book value on this one also. I think the book value on Liongate, if I... Thirteen dollars is the book value. They say the breakup, the breakup value. If we, the, the, with the valuation they put on stars, and the uh, their movie unit and everything, the breakup value is twenty-one dollars a share. So at this point, new lows. The only thing this needs is really a uh, a downgrade to put a bottom in there. So, you know, someone that's put in a downgrade, say, you know, because that is already priced in. Um, this is really a. Uh, Really a big, um, you know, uh, I think it's going to be a huge opportunity. So I think I'm going to pick up some more of this tomorrow, uh, especially if it pulls back. I had a lower trend line. I don't think we're going to get under $10. I'm, I'm really surprised. I know uh, the, um, well, what's his name? I forget his first name. Malone is a big uh, investor, has a stake in this. Uh, they haven't heard anything about that. I remember, you know, Liongate Films turned down a offer from Hasbro uh, a few years ago. I forget how much it was a share. I think it was like forty something dollars a share. And then recently there was an uh, informal offer from CBS for Stars Network for five billion dollars, which would have put the value at twenty two, twenty one, twenty three dollars on Liongate Films. Um, there's chatter out that that this is now starting to come into an area where it's it's becoming attractive. Uh, and it's becoming really cheap. So I have a feeling that this one is going to pop here pretty fast. And I want to be part of it. I don't know how we're going to look at it tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to scale into it. Hopefully I get a reversal on it. We get some a nice trade on this. But it's getting real cheap here. 
Lion Gate Film, Last of the Independent, and you know how media is. Everyone's go- gobbling up media companies. If you do some research on Lion Gate Films, you will see all the uh, interesting facts of, of, of this one, of how this was. Uh, let me see if I can find any other information on Going Strong, Sunny Lemon Gem, over, um, you know, Lion Gate. Let's see a form 8K here. Who's that? Let me see what that is. All right. Recent stock price, Lion Gate Films, is valued at less than some of its parts. According to Tim Nolan, Macquarie Capital Analyst, shares could be worth 21 in a breakup with a $5 billion valuation on stars, $1.5 billion motion picture unit, and $1 billion for the TV segment. And that seems reasonable. And the Malone stake here, investors such as cable magnate uh, John Malone, who first bought shares in 2015 around $30 is a rare miss. He controls about 8% of Class A shares. Hedge fund manager uh, Mark Ratsky, Liongate chairman, is the biggest investor with 19% of Class A stake. He, is, uh, he has owned shares since 2004 and backed the studio in fighting a takeover by Carl Icahn in 2010. I remember that. Um, spokesman from Malone did not return a request for comment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Trends of sweeping Hollywood will only make it more difficult for Lion Gate to remain independent. The mergers of Disney and Fox, film companies, and AT&T and Time Warner, along with Comcast Universal Pictures, have created a trio of studios that own and produce well-known blockbusters and movie franchises, such as Marvel, Superhero Universe, and DC Comics, the results of small groups of big films increasing dominating the box office. Plus the Netflix production, Moreover, buyers from Liongate typically mid-budget fare uh, may be shrinking. Disney and Warner, uh, Warner Media are investing billions to make their own shows to lure subscribers to new streaming services. Netflix, too, is producing more and more of the original content in-house. A big change from the early days when Liongate's Orange is the New Black helped make the streaming channel require viewing. That trend could lessen demand for TV programs and films made by independent studios. Um... So, yeah, we need something big to happen on this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it tomorrow. Might add to it tomorrow. Good shot. I like the uh, chart on this a lot. Uh, that's about it. I like the weekly. This is the weekly getting oversold. We kind of pinpoint every time that weekly got down to underneath 10 area, or at least underneath the, uh, I would say underneath 10 is where it bounced. So here we actually broke down a little bit more and then finally got a bounce up to the 20. Back here we had a, not much of a bounce. This was more of a better bounce back up to the 20. Uh, back here we pulled away from the 20. Now look how far we are away from the 20. And when I said 20, I'm talking about the 20 period moving average here on the weekly. So remember, these are weekly candles. So we get a nice weekly candle. Um, say we move back up to... The 20 period moving average starting soon that would give us a 25 percent move basically is a move back up here it's not bad 25 percent move just to get us back to the 20 period moving average to get us to the 50 period moving average that would be uh let's see that would be a 46 percent move a huge move so again maybe a, a, a big candle we get something that's on the weekly though remember that weekly is not going to play out until next till we can see that now here's the daily and daily here we had that good that was the rumor of the the big going out for stars it actually took some profits on that and it pulled back and got back into it that since then it's dropped but i have the options on this so we still have some time on it and here's the daily and again the daily it doesn't happen to pull away from that 20 period moving too often before spiking back up to it. Look at how far we're away from this. This looks really good. Um, unless you're waiting for it to die and then someone's going to come Order in here and just scoop, scoop it up. This is, look, this is looking real cheap to me though. Real, real cheap now. Well, I'm going to be watching this closer tomorrow. Probably going to be taking a, back, a bigger bigger position on this and looking for something. All right. Um, we're going to look at some other stocks also. 
So I'm looking at the options here. I started the video back up. I'm looking at the, all the way out to December here. The uh, two seven, uh, the uh, ten dollars is about two seventy. If you go uh, to September, uh, the ten dollars or two dollars, um, two thirty, two fifteen, two twenty five. You know, to get a pop back above 10 before that even happens, I think is worth a shot here. I think it's definitely worth a shot. I'm going to look at these tomorrow. I'm going to actually look at the, we'll see what the day starts off. We get a downgrade on Langate Films. That would be perfect. I'd buy that downgrade. Buy it right up. We go out here to uh, July. Uh, the 1250s, a little action in those. Trading at 40 cents. Nothing happened on the tens. That's pretty. Ch that's interesting too. Going out. That's 25 days. Not far enough for me. Trade dominator and Q over bot. Well, I guess it's more. Hmm. All right. Well, that's what we're looking at tomorrow. One of these stocks we're looking at. All right. So I'm looking at the bot trade right here. We just had two setups. We had a flag setup. A, a, what we call a 2020 flag and a DTR divergence, and I'm going to fix those. Those um, it says long, long, but they're they're going to be labeled right. But both of them have tr triggered here. The flag right where the green line is represents a fast rotation, a, a hold above the 80 on the stochastic, uh, slow stochastic there that we have. Order filled. And there we have a nice pop on it. So profits are being taken on something. Looks like profits were taken on the flag, and now we have a divergence that's following up with a break, uh, break, uh, break even stop. The stop is moving up behind it, and there it goes. So we got a little bit more coming in. Market's acting pretty good. It's up 575. And that's where we are standing now. So very rarely you see a flag and a divergence set up, but I could see how that happened here. If you look at Order the... Order filled. There it is. So it scaled out of two, then scaled out another two. Now it just has a trail left, and it looks like the trail is two contracts left on the trail. Um... Here we had the um, the flag here, but from this low to that low right there, and that low, that was the classic divergence right there. Classic divergence. Right here. Right here, right here. Perfect divergence. Perfect. It's moving up right now. Let's go back to the other. I'll let that trail and stop just followed up. Again, if you're watching this video and not part of day trading radio, um, you get access to this f for now as we are in testing phase on the bot. It's on your DTR2 channel. And you can follow that 24-7. As long as the markets are open, this thing is moving. And grooving. We got all kinds of good stuff on this. Goes short, goes long. Combined with the tradeometer, it's the most effective timing tool out there. It shows you where to place the stops, where to put the, the profit zones. It runs automatic. No, no, uh, no motion involved. And you know why we're doing it, and you get taught exactly. Why it's taking that setup? I mean, you could probably eventually learn the setups and recognize them yourself. But especially at nine, like you know, nine fifty-four, you're sitting on the couch watching something, and all of a sudden, the bot sends you a text saying, "You know, f divergence and the flag setup trade, trade, trade opportunity." You go to the computer, you take, you place your trade, and then you go back, sit down on the couch, and let it let it play out. That's what I like. That's what you need to do. We're at the highs on the uh, on the day. Highs on the day right now. Let me just go back to the other. I wanted to show you how the, the bot here will just take profits if it pulls back a little bit. It's already, you can see the, the stop has moved up above the break-even zone. We'll trail that up. 
about four ticks underneath it. So if it does have any big runners, it will follow it right up. So we'll go back to the chart over here. <clears throat> you can see here right at the highs. Now it came into this week looking for a little pop pre mark I mean not pre market, but beginning of the week pop, Monday, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday. But Monday, Tuesday, looking for more of a positive vibe to this market and follow through from last week. Today we were up seven, eight points. Maybe I don't know how what the high was. Maybe it was a little bit higher, seven or eight. eight. Uh, and then we pulled back and closed uh, pretty flat on the day. Now it's after hours again, and we're starting to climb back up. Starting to climb back up. Well, I'm liking this phone that I got. I mean, this i i uh, i watch. I'm really starting to like this. I just got a note a notification. I just look at my watch and I said, "Oh, I don't have to pull up my phone or anything." Hmm. Order, Order filled. filled. And there it is. Stop here being taken as a pullback here, the trail. So if you go back to that, you'll see everything that's labeled there. You see the two entries. You'll see the two entries, and you'll see all the um, exits. If there is any exits to be seen. There we go. Let's switch it over there. Look at that. Perfect. Now it's pulling back. Oh, I didn't move the chart over here. Sorry, I didn't move the chart over here. All right, there it is, back over here. I was talking about the, we're up against the highs here. I didn't show that before. You know, I'm just going to put the video back on here just to, t just to mention Lakeland Industry. We traded this back. 2000, we were just looking at it. I traded this back in 2014 during the Ebola breakout, or the Ebola scare. And, you know, we had those planes coming over. People were coughing. They were sorry that everyone was freaking out. Ebola, Ebola, Ebola. If someone has, everyone was expecting to have it. And, man, this, these stocks here were running. They were looking for a cure. But this was Lakeland. They did um, the biohazard suit. And then um, from that point on, we, we haven't looked back at it. But I was just mentioning on the radio tonight that Ebola has been at the, like the highest breakout level since probably back then. I mean, it's, it's a severe uh, case again over in Africa. So I'm just looking at the Lakeland just, just, just to ref, you know, reference it, see what it's looking like. And it actually is a nice pullback. Um, it's oversold. I mean, we get a little bit more hype on this. These, these stocks could come back into play for some reason. You know, they tend to, uh, Something tends to happen. Um, I don't know if it, if someone comes on the plane with Ebola. That's what we need to uh, get this thing popping. It's not a very active stock. I mean, today was the lightest volume we've had in a long time. 2,000 shares. Holy crap, 2,000 shares. 25,000 shares. This thing trades less than uh, Veru. <laughs> this thing is a, is a turd. Here's Veru. Veru, at least that's 50,000 shares going at it before it's. Wow. What was the other ones? Anyway, just wanted to touch base with you on that one because that's uh, quite interesting right now. See if that happens over the next couple of days if you hear of any Ebola outbreaks in uh, anywhere around here. You know, just any type of mention Ebola in the U.S. Look to LAKE as one of the plays. I'm going to go over one more stock for tomorrow. And it hasn't broken out yet. And it might not until our next kind of bullish phase we get through this. But this hasn't rolled over too bad. It's hanging up right against that 100 mark. We need an upgrade. We need some kind of catalyst on this. What I like about the uh, MDT here is the slow rotation down. Just, not ref just kind of refusing to give it up. Um, slowly drifting here, slowly, slowly, slowly drifting. You might have an argument for a little divergence here to the sell side, double top, a little bounce, and it has been pulling back. But other than that, it's it's not uh, it's not that bad. It had the last uh, I don't know if there was a print here at the last. Well, 
not much going on on the um, the five minute chart, but it's hanging up here again. Take a look at the big picture. I think we can get a breakout here and start to really move MDT. So uh, really, the big number is that hundred dollar mark, and we need to get a breakout. Once we do get a breakout on some news, then it should rally a bit. But at that point, we'll probably already have some nice profits. And I don't know, we'll decide what happens. But keep an eye on this one for a breakout above 100. All right, I want to lock up the video, send this out for tomorrow. I'll stick around with you guys a bit here on the show. Maybe we'll play some music now. Um, if you get this, you're not a member of Day Trading Radio, come on by, daytradingradio.com. There is a uh, scroll under the main live video, uh, daytradingradio.com. Sign up for a trial, check it out, be part of the community, and uh, make some money. So we'll see you in the markets tomorrow. This is Monday. It'll be Tuesday, June 25th, and we'll see you then. And for those out there still listening, stick around. I want to. Just, uh, I'll, I'm going to stick around here. I got to do some work, research. Maybe I'll try to label these bot trades.